Hey guys, don't be afraid to dream dreams. And dream them, dream them bigger than yourself. Uh, God can do anything above and beyond anything you can imagine or ask for. Uh, this is an indication of what God can do, what God will do. So uh, dare to dream, dare to believe that God will use you to be a special blessing to not only a church but a community and beyond. So we're so grateful. God bless you. So we've been talking about Bless to Bless this past month. We've picked actually some uh, uh, prayers in the Bible. And we have seen how in these prayers there's that, there's that word blessing. So we, we looked at that and we have defined it and we understand its meaning, especially in the context where it was uttered or where it was said. This morning we're looking at something that is not necessarily a prayer, but it is a proclamation. It is something that is said for the good of Israel. Now, we find it in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 and following. This is called the sacerdotal or the priestly uh, blessing, the priestly blessing. God spoke to Moses and says, speak to Aaron, the head of the, or the priests and his family, and I want them to bless Israel. Now, you, you, you say, well, you know, that's all over the place. But this is, this is very, very special. The reason for it is because Israel had come out of 400 years of slavery. They had just crossed the Red Sea. They're now going on their way to the promised land. This is the second year since they crossed. They're having a census. They're talking about how many people are there and the heads of the tribes and all that kind of stuff. He says, but I want you to, I want you to bless these people. And I want, you, I want them to understand how blessed they are. Uh, so you can imagine, after 400 years uh, under uh, the pharaohs and in the category of being uh, slaves, these people had lost it, man. First of all, as a slave, you would lose your identity. They wouldn't call you, hey, Johnny, come here. I want to say something to you. They would say, hey, slave of somebody. That's the way they addressed you. You were the slave of, uh, you weren't. You, were, you didn't have a name. You didn't have a name. Also, you, had, you, you would lose everything. You owed, owned nothing, owned absolutely zero. So you can imagine these people, they're dirt poor. Poverty is rampant, obviously. And, uh, uh, and so God wanted to bless, uh, bless them so that they would begin to understand that God was getting ready to do something very, very special in their lives. Of course, that they would lose, I had said already, everything. And, and, and when God is speaking to the priest about blessing them, about speaking a blessing over them, he has all this stuff in mind. He wants to make sure that they understand or they are able to understand the, the idea of being a blessed nation under the name of Jehovah God. These people uh, had forgotten everything, had forgotten everything. And uh, as we look at, at, at this blessing that was pronounced on them, we begin to understand how God operates in our own lives. We, 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 we struggle accepting the fact that we're a blessed people. It's a lot easier for us to accept some of the problems that we have seen or created in the past. And we, and, and we have a, a tendency to go back. We have a tendency to look back. And say, you know what? Yeah, man, I really blew it. Uh, and, and it's there. It's, you can't get rid of it. The good things seem like they come and they're gone. You sort of forget them. But the bad things, they sort of stick and they stay. And, and that was a p problem of Israel. I mean, when they went in to Egypt, they went in as a blessed family. There was, there was a head of the family and all the tribes. And they went in, and they went because of their brother, and you know all the story, and how they were a blessed people. But it took many years, many years, many years, so that that would kind of erase, and they become more and more under the, uh, the control of, of Pharaoh, and all the, all the people that were with him, and now they have become this nation 
that really didn't have an identity, didn't have a name, they didn't really know who they were uh, or nothing of what God had promised them. And so we see the, the blessing that the priests bring upon them. Notice, it's the priests that bring the blessing, not the heads of the tribes. God often would tell Abraham or Moses, hey, tell the heads of the tribes to do this. But this is not a political thing. This is not a political blessing. This is a spiritual blessing. They must understand that they were a nation under God. And what they were going to receive or were receiving was because of a spiritual pronouncement by the priests on their lives. And many times we go to friends and, you know, people that we know and, and, and we expect them to bless us some way, somehow. We expect them to give us a word. Give me a word, man. What is the Lord telling you? Is the Lord saying something to you? And I want you to pronounce that word over me. And really, uh, I, let, let me just tell you right now, don't, don't put your trust in that. Don't put your trust in that. A lot of times, God uses people. But the greatest pronouncement that, that we could give you as a, as a, as a church is from the, the, the pastors of this church. That we not only pronounce something because it comes from God, but we pronounce it because it's in us to bless you. They didn't say, uh, in the name of the Lord, we bless you, nation of Israel. They said, no, we as priests, we bless you and receive this blessing. And the priest had that authority just as we have that authority of being able to bless you. And what a privilege we have of being able to bring that upon you as a, as a, as a people. I want you to notice that when God says, this is how you will bless Israel, he is saying, I want all the curse that's on this nation to be removed. For 400 years, they've been a cursed nation. They have been under this control. They've become these people that are now so different from what they should, should be. And I want the, this curse that is on them to be removed. Uh, the promise of Abraham had been forgotten. God had told Abraham, you are a blessed person, and you're a blessed family, and you're a blessed nation, and you will bless everybody. And everybody, anybody that comes nigh unto you, that some way, somehow bless you, they will be blessed. But they had forgotten all that. It was 400 years later. All that stuff had sort of gone by the wayside. So God is saying, hey, they need to have a freedom of, of, of this curse that's been placed upon them as a nation of slaves, not the nation of Israel. God had not forgotten his promises. These people had forgotten the promises. They didn't, they didn't have a lot to say about those promises. As a matter of fact, there's very little in Egypt. In the ruins, you know, when they, when they go and, and uh, go to the ruins and try to pick up something that's been there for years and years and years and there's not a lot there that speaks about the nation of Israel being there. The land of Goshen and all that area, there's very little. There's a sign here and a sign there. But it speaks about a people that were really nobodies. That's what they were considered, nobodies. They're a nation that exists and nobody sees them. Nobody comes, uh, takes them into consideration. Nobody approves of them. They're a nobody nation. God says, I want that curse removed from these people. Moses constantly reminded them. The book of Deuteronomy, especially following the book of Numbers, constantly reminds them that they're a holy, blessed nation. He had to repeat that. Uh, he needed to make sure that these people would finally accept the idea of being a blessed, holy nation. A nation set apart by God for God. They struggle with that. For example, in the in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6, he says, you are a holy and blessed nation. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, says, you, here's the blessings of obedience. Guys, obey what God is asking of you. Listen to his laws and put them to practice, and you will be blessed. The whole chapter is divided in two parts, the blessings and the curses. You don't want to get into the curses. This is where you have been. God wants to remove those curses. He wants to bring you into blessings. And notice in that chapter, first God pronounces the blessings, not the curse. 
So he's struggling to get these people to accept the fact that they are a blessed nation. I look at us uh, as people, and I've already, I, I, I kind of want to repeat this because, uh, again, you may be listening to me this morning. You're saying, you know what, wonderful what pastor is saying, but you know what, I, 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 there's something that happened in my past. I just can't get rid of it. It's constantly there. It bugs me. And when I want to have my moment of, 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 of great success or, or a feeling of, man, I've made it, whatever, that comes to mind. And it sort of holds me back. And it pulls me back to that condition of curse. And so this morning, I want to repeat it to you. You are a blessed people. You are a blessed people. Just like it says to them, remember, we are children, spiritual children of Abraham. We're spiritual children of Abraham. All the promises that were given by, by Abraham to the nation of Israel, there are promises through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? There are promises. It's us. It's for us. So we come under this blessing as well. So the blessings that were bestowed by the priests on Israel, number one, the Lord says, you, bless you, and keep you. He says, the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, the blessing included four very important things as we study the Old Testament for the people of Israel. Presence, prosperity, panacea, and peace. The blessing of presence. God is saying to these people now, I will be with you always. Now, to us, it doesn't mean maybe a whole lot. We hear it all the time. We sing about it. We praise God for it because we know that he's with us. But notice, these people that have been 400 years in slavery, they had no idea, no concept of, a, of, a, of an ever-present God. And God says, I want them to know that I will be present. I will always be there. But where, you know, in the desert, God, in the desert, I'm just going to go with you. And he proved it by giving them a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He was there. He was there. He would speak through his priests. He would speak to the head. He would speak to them. God was present. God was always there. Blessing of God's presence. They had to understand that. They had to come to grips with that. The blessing of prosperity. Notice, from extreme poverty, they owed uh, nothing. Everything was, had been taken from them. They did not own a piece of nothing. Everything was belonged to somebody else. To prosperity. God is saying now, you will be blessed with prosperity. People struggle with that. Uh, I think that we struggle with that. That God would want to bless us and have uh, a little extra all the time. And God wants you to. I'm not one of those prosperity preachers, but I believe in the prosperity of the Bible. That it's there, constantly there. You study the word of God and God is saying, I'm always ready to bless you. I'm always going to provide for you. You'll never have to want for anything because I will take care of you. The blessing of prosperity. God has blessed us too, Templo Calvario. He promised them that they were going to be a blessed nation through the desert, imagine. And he's telling us today, we're going through the desert here. We're going to go to the other side. And we, he wants us to understand now that we're blessed. We are blessed. I know that God has provided in so many ways for you. Uh, that you're able to have the little extra money and, and maybe buy a house and start a business and do whatever God directs you to do with that money and those blessings that God has provided. You are a blessed people. Accept it. Receive it in Jesus' name. The blessing of panacea, which is a medicine to cure everything. God says, I will keep you healthy. I will provide this spiritual medicine for you. You will always be in the condition I want you to be. So God, God just blessed them that way. And, and, and in the context of, again, of where this was pronounced on them, looking back at uh, 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 being in Egypt for 400 years as a slave, I mean, 
Is it possible that God is always with us? We're going to prosper and we're going to be healthy? And the Lord is saying, yes. You guys are going to have all this. It is for you because of who I am. And the blessing of peace. Peace stands for harmony, wholeness, completeness. Always complete in God. What a, what a privilege of being able to know that we are a people of peace. We have peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of trials and tribulations, God gives us peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. That's what we have received and it's in us. You know, sometimes on the surface, circumstances are quite negative. They're proving, they're testing, but inside of us there is a peace. How can you have this peace? Somebody asks you. Well, because God, God said you will have peace. And we have that peace. Everything's falling apart, but inside we have the peace of God. Thank God for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so the Lord says, bless you and keep you. Secondly, make his face to shine upon you and have mercy on you. Make his face to shine upon you. Always, always looking at you. Not in a scary way. Oh my God, God is watching. God is looking at me. No, he's there looking at you because he's always concerned about you. Wherever you find yourself, he's always concerned about you. He's all, you, can, you can bet your bottom dollar that God is watching over you. The expression, the hound of heaven, it is a very real expression that is always not only watching over you, but following you, looking for you. He's always there to rescue you and to give you and to provide for you and to be everything that you need. He's there all the time. His constantness is always, always directed towards you. He never turns his face away from you. He doesn't give you his back. He gives you his face. Hallelujah. He gives you everything that he is for you so that you can continue to have the strength that you need and faith that you need to move on. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He does not turn his back on us. His face to shine upon you and have mercy on you. Unmerited favor. Even as he's watching you, every once in a while you're going to blow it. We're all going to blow it. But, he says, but his mercy will always be there. Unmerited favor. You don't deserve it. You blew it. You did something wrong. But God says, my mercy will be there. I will, I will bless you regardless. It's so, so easy for us to make mistakes. It's like we're prone to make mistakes. It's almost in our nature to make mistakes. But it's good to know that in the nature of God, there is mercy directed towards us. This is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve his love. We don't deserve his compassion. We don't deserve all the goodness that he's providing for us. But he does it because he's God and because he loves us. So he'll always be on the lookout for us to bless us. Amen to that. And then he says, and give you peace. Wow, the prince of peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace, peace beyond comprehension. Peace in the presence of circumstances I've already said. Think about that nation. They had not experienced peace in Egypt for 400 years. They had not experienced peace. I mean, there was always a boss that says, go do this, go do that. That's what he did. That's what the slave was there for, to be told what to do. There was no peace of saying, I can go home and find my place of rest and everything will be fine. No, he would work, the slave would work all day long in the fields, making the pharaoh's big buildings, whatever. Then he'd go home and didn't go home to rest, to enter in peace, as the Lord says to us. He would go to bathe himself and serve his master. 
And his master says, I want you to prepare me this dinner. I want you to serve it. I want you to give me everything that I need. Give me a bath and do everything that I want. And that's what he had to do. There's no peace. There's no rest. But God is saying, I give you peace, Israel. Wow. I, I think they had trouble understanding all this stuff. He's given us peace. And he is God Almighty. Yes, this God Almighty is a God of peace. And he, therefore, he gives us peace. It isn't something that he can give. It's something that he is. He's a prince of peace. And then he says, place my name over Israel. I mean, I tell you what. We can preach on this one. Place my name over Israel. Let me take you back. They were nobodies. They didn't have a name. Some, I'm sure, remembered because of the grandparents, the grandparents, and the grandparents that told them, you're a nation, descendants of Abraham. But, you know, you can hear that so many times and, and live your life the way it's now being lived in slavery for so many years that eventually you sort of forget that. It doesn't mean anything. But God, God is saying, hey, guys, I, I'm doing something different. You're no, lo no longer back there. You're nobodies anymore. All that stuff that was taken from you, I'm bringing it all that stuff back. As a matter of fact, they gave them a little sample. When they walked out of Egypt and they're going and crossing the Red Sea, God told the Egyptians, give them stuff. Give them stuff. And they gave them gold and silver and they gave them goats and sheep and all kinds of stuff. Israel left Egypt with a lot of goodies that they needed for the desert. And I, I just praise God because they discovered that they were blessed to bless. Because a lot of that stuff that they received, they gave it back to God. Here, when they built the tabernacle, they brought it and gave it to Moses for the tabernacle. And later on for other purposes. They realized that what they had received was to give. God had blessed them, so now it's time to bless. And so now they're, they're, they're sort of getting the idea of the blessings of God on them. But this one, now we have a name. Now we're not just nobodies. Now we have the name and the name of God. God is giving us his name. We are the children of the most high God. Jesus said, you know, and everyone that received him, he gave them the authority, the power to be children of the Most High God. We are the children of the Most High God. Come on, somebody. You've got to say thank you, Lord, for that blessing that's on our lives. And wherever we find ourselves, we can make that pronouncement. We don't have to be afraid to tell anybody, I am a child of God. I am a Christian. I'm not ashamed to be a Christian. I am who I am because of him. So this nation, all of a sudden, receive a name. And it's the name of Jehovah God. We've studied the name of Jehovah. Man, there's a lot of things that that name means to us, meant to them, and it means to us today. Well, all that is us. That's for us. You're so blessed, people. You are so blessed as they were. We are, the Bible says that we are co-inheritors with Christ. So in other words, everything that he owns is ours. Wow. Everything that Jesus owns is ours. Because we're co-inheritors with Christ. Hallelujah. What a prayer. And sometimes we're complaining because we don't have the money for this or we don't have this for that. Don't complain about anything, man. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because of who I am and what I'm able to now receive and appropriate to my life. You are everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what happens? We go from chapter 6, the latter part, to chapter 7 in the book of Numbers. And we discover that they discovered in themselves the blessing of being able to give. They 
started bringing stuff for the tabernacle all over the place. Everything that they needed for the tabernacle. They realized that they were blessed, and as they would bless the work of God, they would continue to be blessed. So we've asked you this, that this Sunday you do the same. It's a principle in Scripture. We're following it. It's all over the place. You know that uh, we've been taught to give here for 42 years. <laughs> I've taught you to give. It's taken a lot of time, you know, for some people to learn to give. But many have discovered the blessing of giving. And thank God that, uh, that you do give. And we, we, we uh, you know, our, our um, accountant says something to us. She says, I've, I have seen how the church is very faithful in their giving, and that is very special. You guys are faithful in your giving. You demonstrate the fact that you realize that you're here to support the work of the Lord, back it up, do whatever you can to make it grow, and one of the ways is by giving what you've received from God himself. I think you realize that the job you have is because of God. Amen? The money that you have in your bank is because of the Lord. Amen? The house that you have is because of God. Everything that we have is from Him. And therefore it belongs to Him. And we give it back to Him. It's wonderful. It's a, it's a wonderful way of living. I, I pity the people that have not discovered the blessing of giving. When they have not discovered that, they are robbing themselves of the blessings of God. You know, we had our superintendent speak to us uh, yesterday, and he, was, and he was saying that Jesus, when he was ministering, he was followed, book 14 of St. Luke, he was followed by a multitude. And there were a bunch of people following him, and of course, you know why they followed him. They followed him because of what he gave them. He gave them healings, and he gave them food, and he gave them a word and all kinds of stuff. So they followed him. And finally, the Lord sort of got a little upset about all this, and he stopped somewhere, and, he, and he, from the crowd, he picked those that he wanted to choose and said, hey, I want to make you my disciples. There's going to be a difference between my disciples and the crowd. The crowd is not doing a whole lot to please me. They just follow me. They're just ready to receive. Crowds receive. Disciples give. Disciples give. And he said, right away, he says, if you want to be my disciples, it's going to cost you. Because you give. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you everything. You're going to have to carry your cross every day. You're going to have to give not only your money, your time, your talents, your treasure, but you're going to have to give your very life. So we have learned that it costs to be a disciple of Christ. But it's a good experience, isn't it? It's something good that we've learned as his children. We've grown up and we've learned to bless because he has blessed us. So this morning you have an envelope. And we ask you to fill out the envelope. And put a special offering in. Maybe you want to do it uh, through one of the different systems that we have online, etc. Credit card. And if you want to put in the back of it, it has information or credit card. Or a check, whatever, cash. And, uh, and we've asked you to give this. This is a once a year. And we call it the Bless to Bless offering. We do it the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Because it's a time to give. It's, it's just a, an incredible feeling of being able to give not only to the church but to the community and for people that are in need and all kinds of stuff. It's just wonderful that we're able to do that. And the more you give, the more you, you receive from God. Somebody has said that you cannot outgive God, and that is so true. The more you give, the more he gives you. The more he gives you. And many of us can give testimony to that. This morning, it's, it's, it's real, man. It's not just something we say. It's for reals. It happens. We give and he gives us to give more and more and more. I, 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 I'm just blessed to be able to be able to give and I'm blessed to hear, to see you give as well. What we're going to do this morning, 
I'm going to ask you to pull out your envelope and fill it out, please, or your check, whatever you're going to do. And I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward, and they're going to stand in the front here. You're going to pick the, more, the best looking of all of them and bring your offering to him or to her uh, or the one that treats you the best. I don't like those ushers that always have ugly faces. <laughs> I like the ushers that give you a smile. And treat you nice as God bless you, brother. Welcome, welcome. I like those ushers. And uh, you're gonna bring, come forward and give your offering in just a moment. And you're demonstrating by doing that that you want to be one of the ones that can be counted on to say, I am ready to bless because God has blessed me. So come forward, please, ushers, to the very front. Stand in front of the platform. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Now put a smile on. Put a smile on. Come on, smile. Gilbert, I want that smile, brother. Uh, I want everybody, oh, you do have a smile on. Keep it on, keep it on, because you want them to come, and I want them to come. You know, okay, Pastor, you, what is this for? You do it once a year, but what is it for? Uh, is it just to grow our funds? I wish. <laughs> I wish. No. We, uh, as you know, we've done a lot of things. We just built a new nursery. I mean, I can say praise the Lord for that. Amen. And we have, we bought a whole system of being able to track your child and track you uh, so that you don't leave and leave your child here. We can find you wherever. <laughs> we have, you know, we, we, we've been saying, we, because we've heard you, we've heard you. You have complained a little bit about not enough for the children, not enough for the youth, uh, and, and etc. And so we said, we're going to do something for the children, we're going to do something for the youth. And so we have the nursery for the children, and we have the small wonders for the children. Beautiful facility. Uh, we're making it better all the time. There's more coming, by the way, uh, for that facility for the children to enjoy and, and, and have fun and all that kind of stuff and receive the word. Also for the youth, we've built a room upstairs. We call it the upper room. Now we can fit over 100 Young people in that room with this just had a, uh, yeah, just had a little bit of a, 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 a banquet a gathering there. And they had a, close to 70 sitting on tables. We can put tables up there. All kinds of goodies for them. We have another room that we have also for the youth, the youth uh, that we uh, call it the media room. <clears throat> That's also looking great. I mean, we're doing all kinds of stuff. And, of course, this helps to cover all those expenses. Because it costs thousands of dollars. But it's, it's I don't want to just say that it's just for material stuff. No, no. It's for our children. You're giving for our children, okay? You're giving for our youth. Those are the coming generations. We're giving to support what is going on right now. We're blessing the community all over the place. All kinds of activities out there. And we, we don't charge them, we give them. Food and this and balloons and toys. We're, we have a uh, grateful heart coming up. We're going to give, I don't know how many, hundreds of toys, over a thousand toys to different areas of the community. We're going to bless uh, Edward B. Cole School. We're going to bless some families there that are super needy. We're, we're just going to bless people. And, and by doing this, you're helping for all that. So you're blessed to bless others. So that's what we're doing. We're blessing others. Amen. Would you stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. And thank you, Lord, for providing in so many ways. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a, a new heart. A heart of giving, Lord. That it's a, it's a joy. We consider it a joy. It's not a burden. It's a joy that we're able to give, Lord God. And so this morning... As we prepare to give, Lord God, we're, we're just asking you, Lord God, to, to receive our seed that we are planting, we are putting in your hands so that you can multiply it and use it for your kingdom, Lord. So many opportunities. Receive it this morning, Lord. And we're also asking, Father, that you would continue to bless your people. Give them a, a better job. Give them a good job. Give them, Lord, a business. Lord God, give them a house. Give them, Lord, what they've been asking for. 
Oh, that I would be blessed, Jabez said. And we're saying that this morning, that we would be blessed. And I bless this church in the name of Jesus Christ with the blessings of Almighty God, with all these blessings, Lord God, that you have pronounced. They are blessed. I pray they'll receive it, experience it, live it out. Amen. That you would be glorified, Almighty God. So bless the offering this morning, Lord. Every dollar that is given, those that are able to give a thousand, those that will give five hundred, those that will give two hundred and fifty, whatever, Lord God, bless it in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. You can start coming, please, this morning and deposit your envelope uh, in one of these buckets. Uh, I'm going to look for the the one that's the nicest. Who's the nicest here? This gentleman over here has been a part of our ushering team for years. Derry, bless you, my brother. Thank you so much for helping us for so many years. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really, really appreciate all that you're doing, and I do it in the name of the Lord. In the name of Templo Calvario, representing the church, I say thank you for your faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness to God Almighty. He asks us to give and you're responding, you're giving. That is incredibly wonderful. Amen. Once a year we say let's bless the work of the Lord. And we do it with a lot of joy. There's nobody here that says, oh, my God, here we go again. We've learned to give. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We've learned to give and give God Almighty what is his. Now, just in case you might have forgotten to come, <clears throat> and just in case you couldn't get up and come for who knows what reason, your hip hurts a lot, we're going to ask the ushers to go back and pick up the rest of the offering that you guys have in your pocket. Go and st bring it out. Gilbert says, hey, come on, give me that money. So ushers go back and pick up the offering. And who are uh, the singers here? Let me have the worship team this morning. Amen, amen. They're hiding. They're hiding. 